Hi Broncos, it's Mrs. W. It's Friday, February 12th, and this has been a busy week. So on Monday we had Lincoln's birthday, and so we were off, and then on Tuesday we had TKK and second grade materials pickup, and Wednesday we had the SSC meeting and the PTA meeting, and then on Friday, today, is Lunar New Year, and then we don't have any school next Monday. Um, also, we still have Black History Month that's going on and Pennies for Patients, our fundraiser. Um, so it's been exciting. Next week, as I said, there's no school on Monday because of President's Day. We'll be finishing up NWEA testing for second through fifth graders. And then on Wednesday at noon, we have a parent lunch with Mrs. W. So keep an eye out for the parent email. It'll give you a link to the Zoom so you can sign on and have lunch with me. Um, so I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying safe and um, keeping up with this strange weather. I feel like it's always changing. So today I'm going to be reading a book called Goldilocks and the Three Pandas by Natasha Yim. Kids, you may know this, that this sounds like a story you know. This. When Goldilocks was born, her mother said, You're the golden dragon. Very lucky year. This child will have good luck. She has a face as round as a gold coin, said her father. This child will bring great, great wealth. But Goldie had neither great wealth nor good luck. In fact, she could never seem to keep money in her piggy bank, and she had a bad habit of breaking things. One Chinese New Year, Goldie's mother woke her up and sent her to wish their neighbors Kung Hai Fat Choi. But Mama, I'm still sleepy and I'm so hungry. It'll only take a minute, her mother said. Mr. and Mrs. Chan would enjoy a visit from you. Take these turnip cakes to share with the little Chan. He never shares stuff with me, muttered Goldie. It's the new year, her mother warned. Wash away old arguments and be nice or you'll have bad luck. Not more bad luck. Last year, she lost the red envelope her grandmother had given her, and her best friend moved away. Often the red envelopes have money inside of them. So Goldie walked next door to the Chan's apartment. She knocked on the door. No answer. She knocked again. Still no answer. Goldie gave the door a little push. It swung open and she tumbled in, dropping the plate of turnip cake. Dropping the plate, turnip cakes catapulted all over the floor. Oh no, Goldie cried. A whole plate of turnip cakes ruined. That was bad luck for sure. She wandered into the kitchen to find a broom. On the table were three steaming bowls of congee, a ceramic bowl, a wooden bowl, and a plastic bowl. Her tummy grumbled. Surely no one would mind if she had one little bite of rice porridge. She sampled the kanji from the ceramic bowl. Ugh, too watery. She tasted the kanji from the wooden bowl. Yuck, too thick and clumpy. Then she slurped some kanji from the plastic bowl. Mmm, just right. Before she knew it, she had eaten it all up. Does this remind you of a story that you've heard before? All that kanji made Goldie even sleepier than she already was. Maybe she could just rest a bit and wait for the Chans. She walked into the living room and saw three chairs. She plunked down in Mr. Chan's massage chair. Something hard steamrolled up and down her back. Ouch! She cried, springing to her feet. Too rough! Next, she plopped into Mrs. Chan's armchair and disappeared into the fluffy pillows. She felt like stuffing in a pork bun. Oof! She mumbled, too soft. Then she squeezed herself into little Chan's rocking chair. She shouted as she rocked back and forth. But she pushed too hard and the chair somersaulted backward. It hit the floor with a splintering crash. Oh no, Goldie exclaimed. Seven years bad luck. Or was that a mirror? In either case, she was still so sleepy. She ambled into the bedroom to find a place to lie down. Just for a few minutes, she reasoned. She climbed into a king-size bed. The mattress felt hard as weak old almond cookie. Oh, too uncomfortable. She flopped onto a queen-size bed. The electric bed began to fold her up like a dumpling. Yikes! Too scary, she said. Then she leaped off and settled down onto little Chan's futon. Ah, just right, she sighed and fell fast asleep. When the Chan's finally returned home, who dropped these turnip cakes all over the floor, exclaimed Mr. Chan. And didn't clean them up, asked Mrs. Chan. A whole plate of turnip cakes ruined, groaned little Chan. They headed into the kitchen. Hey, who's been eating my congee, demanded Mr. Chan. And who's been eating my congee, 
cried Mrs. Chan. Little Chan wailed. I don't have any kanji. Someone's eaten mine all up. Mrs. Chan, Mr. Chan heard a humming in the living room. He went to investigate. Someone's turned on my massage chair, he bellowed. And someone's rumpled the cushions on my armchair, yelled Mrs. Chan. I don't even have a chair, shouted Little Chan. It's been smashed to pieces. When the three Chans looked in the bedroom, Mr. Chan hollered. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Mrs. Chan, and someone's been sleeping in my bed, squealed Mrs. Chan. Look, said Little Chan, it's Goldilocks sleeping on my futon. Goldie jerked awake. Who could sleep with all that yelling going on? Mr. Chan, Mrs. Chan, she cried. I didn't mean to fall asleep. In a flutter, she jumped out of bed and dashed home. Her mother had set out kanji for her breakfast. Goldie was just about to take a bite when she thought of Little Chan, who didn't have any more rice porridge in his bowl. I'm not really that hungry, she said to her mother. She went to read a book in her rocking chair. As she rocked back and forth, she thought of little Chan, who didn't have a chair to sit in anymore. I'm still sleepy. I think I'll go to bed, she said. Goldie climbed into her nicely made bed. She thought of the pillows and blankets she had strewn about the Chan's bedroom. I wonder what she's going to do. Goldie jumped up and ran back to the kitchen. She grabbed her bowl of kanji and rushed back to the Chan's apartment. I didn't mean to break little Chan's rocking chair, she said to Mr. Chan. I'll help you glue it back together. I'll fix the blankets I messed up, she said to Mrs. Chan, and make the beds. Goldie handed her bowl of kanji to little Chan. I'm sorry I ate all your rice pudding and dropped all those turnips. That's okay, Goldie, said little Chan shyly. We're just about to make some more. Would you like to help? Look, they're cooking together. So Goldie and Little Chan chopped, stirred, and steamed lots and lots of turnip cakes. Then they fried them up nice and crunchy, crunchy for the New Year's feast. Mrs. Chan handed Goldie a red envelope. Kang hai fat choy, Goldie, she said. May the New Year bring you wealth and good luck. Thank you, Goldie said, but I think I found some good luck already. She smiled at Little Chan and the two friends sat down together to eat a whole plate of turnip cake. So this reminds me of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but Goldilocks, she made it up to the bears after she had broken the chair and messed up their beds and eaten all their food. She made it up to them. And that's what we do. That's called restorative. She restored the relationship. So Broncos, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, remember, today and every day, it's great to be a Bronco. I miss you and I love you. Bye, Broncos. See you on Tuesday, not Monday.